Hello and welcome to This Is. The tech keeps coming and it won't stop coming, so we're gonna go ahead and hit the ground running. We're gonna take a look at some tech that is rumored. What do we think 2024 is gonna look like? We're gonna give it a big old thumbs up or more likely a thumbs down. Wow, so pessimistic. You can't believe that 2024 could be filled with wondrous new tech. We could be living in utopia any minute now. First up, we have the Apple Vision Pro. Mm, mm. This is a tough one, right? My wife took the kids in the divorce, but I got to keep our pre-order of the Apple Vision Pro. So you have a special video. I have a special video of them leaving. Okay. All right. It would help if you pay child support. I'm just saying. Well, I mean, I can't pay child support because I got to pay for <laughs> the Apple Vision Pro. If somehow you're not aware of the Apple Vision Pro, this is a $3,500 augmented reality headset. Now, I don't think anyone doubts that this is going to be very good, but is it going to be practical, useful, and worth the money? I'm really on the fence. I'm going to give this a very soft thumbs up because I'm, I'm curious. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm probably going to be a thing that you go play with for like 20 minutes and be like, oh, whatever. But I still want to give it a shot. I'm excited for this. I'm giving it a soft thumbs down for the exact same reasons that you just yeah. gave. Every VR headset I've ever used in my life, I have enjoyed for a little while I and then sort of bounced off. At no point can I justify $3,500. Exactly. For $3,500. Look, you can see how dead I am inside for free. AI. Woo! AI, 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 AI. That was, I would say, about half of what we saw at CES. I am definitely not an AI believer, but I will say that this year is the first year that it didn't seem like a gimmick. Well, it makes sense because AI really sort of burst onto the scene in 2023. Most of the early demos we saw were very sort of rushed, very sort of gimmicky. Now in 2024, it looks like a lot of companies have kind of got a little bit of a better sense for what you can actually do that's practical. It's such a broad term that it's almost like saying computing. Have you seen the AI mod for Skyrim? I know there's a lot of negative connotation around AI of like, it's, it's going to replace voice that voice actors and stuff like that, which is, I, I fully agree is not good. But the Skyrim mod that gives NPCs AI and lets you just talk to them in VR as their own people is such an immersive experience. And I think that is one of the coolest things mm -hmm. that has come to gaming in a long time, which is why I'm giving thumbs, thumbs up. up. I agree on AI. There's certainly some concerns, but AI is such a big thing that I think that five, 10 years from now, we will look back on this and we're in still the infancy, the baby steps. We got to regulate it. Well, luckily but I single-handedly wrote the law on that iPhone. Did you know that they're going to make an iPhone this year? What? Periscoping zoom lens so they can catch up to Samsung. Solid state volume button, which is BS because I still miss my rocker uh, toggle switch. And then supposedly we have RCS coming to iPhone and they might do the foldy flippy thing. <gasps> Everything I'm hearing is leaning us toward a very quiet iPhone upgrade yeah. year. I'm going to actually give this a thumbs down. Not because I think the iPhone sucks or anything like that. But I think this is not going to be a super exciting year to upgrade. And it's just going to be a very much an S model boring year for what I'm hearing. I'm going to give it a thumbs up on just on the 0.0001% chance that we get a folding iPhone. So that way you can shut the fuck up about a Z Flip. That's fair. Galaxy phones, baby. Z Flip 6 coming your way. We saw some things that we can't really talk about. Okay, I'll not talk about it. Oh, okay. Talk about it. Yeah, we want to. Okay. So we were able to get an exclusive look at the Samsung Galaxy S27. It had three displays, eight Folded cameras. Folded out in like a trifold. Like a map. It has 17 segments of the display. Now we're not supposed to tell you about this. So if anyone asks, you Boom. didn't hear from us. I think this will be a decent year from what I'm hearing. The Z Flip and Z Fold are supposedly getting some decent updates. Potentially a cheaper model of the Z Flip may be coming out. And of course, AI, AI, AI is heavily rumored to be in all of the Samsung Galaxies this year. So I'll give them a thumbs up. I'm gonna give it a thumbs up as I'm well. I'm excited. But mostly for my it looks like Samsung the, Galaxy S27. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You got a side hustle, small business, or do you create content yourself? Well, you can boost your brand and engage your audience with a gorgeous, easy to use website. Squarespace's all in one tools make it super simple to find a flexible template that fits your vision and help it to do whatever you need. And you don't need any IT experience either because Squarespace's fluid engine interface makes it super easy to drag and drop and customize to instantly preview any of your design elements. It makes it absolutely dead simple to create a website that actually looks unique, custom, and 
tailored to what you're looking for. Their built-in store feature makes it a breeze to sell whatever you want, your products, your content, your merch, or even your time. And we put together a lovely website just for this is. Pretty cool, right? Matt had no part of it. I did not. Check out squarespace.com slash this is to get your 14 day free trial and 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And again, huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Transparent displays. Mm, okay. This is a tough one. I've never flip flopped on a yeah. piece of technology. Yeah, yeah I'm with you. Faster. Yeah than transparent displays. This is one of those things that has been sort of kicking around uh, CES for a few years, right? And it's pretty normal. We, you know, we have like a brand new sort of piece of technology, especially something that's quite futuristic like uh, transparent OLEDs. We saw this year a pretty complete transparent OLED. Here's my problem with it because, all right, last year it looked whatever, but this is a, this is a piece of technology that I think breaks a lot of the technology molds. It doesn't matter how cheap this technology gets. Yeah. This doesn't make sense. Of course it doesn't. In, in the average household. Yeah. This only makes sense if you have a mansion where you, like you say, like you have a view overlooking the mountains. Yeah. This piece of technology will never make sense in like someone's apartment. Of course, of course. Because where you put a TV, why does it need but, to be transparent? Okay, but here's the thing. As this tech is getting better and cheaper, First of all, it actually is very useful in like high-end displays and like sort of for commercial uses. On top of that, as it gets cheaper, you can imagine a version of this. Imagine they make like a 20 or 30 inch version and you actually could put it on your coffee table and you have a little display that you can see through when you don't want it. Like you can imagine that, give them a few more years. If you had the ability to take your TV and make it go transparent when you wanted to, there are uses for that. I just Not for everyone. most of those uses are tied to the architecture of, course. of the space. This is for the zero, 0.01% right now. Yep. And then it gets a little cheaper. And then I think it's going to stop at the 1% and never go to like the 10 or the like Maybe. that's that's what I'm saying but with it's this. Cool it's tech. just like it's cool it, tech it is it's really better. cool. Where I do think this would be cool is in like PC cases. I'll give it's it a cool. cool. Yeah. But I looked at this TV and it called me poor. So we just called the audience poor, so it checks out. Windows 12. You might have remembered we did a video about two years ago mm -hmm. that said Windows 12 is here. What? Are you trying to tell me, Matt, that we were incorrect in the video? Because that's never happened. We've never Ever. had an incorrect position a day in our lives. Ever. So the heavy rumor is that this summer, there will be a brand new version of Windows that is focused on a fresh coat of paint and some serious AI learnings that are not only just bolted on the top of Windows 11, which is what's been happening, now, but actually sort of built into more of the core of the operating system. There's a lot of stuff that's really kind of pointing us toward this summer being a very good time to not only potentially buy a PC, but also to take a look at some shiny new toys. You know that they brought out co-pilot buttons at CES? I want my keyboard to be nothing but co-pilot yeah. buttons. Because what's the point of typing when I can have my AI do it for me? Bruh. Bruh. Have you seen this AI shit? It's wild. I used it the other day to help me write a letter to my parole officer saying how I'm sorry that I poured coffee all over the table and I probably should clean that up. But importantly, I'm a big fan of This Is. And I've decided to subscribe to This Is, ring-a-ling the ding-a-ling button, and hope that that gets a few years off my sentence when I inevitably go back to jail for blatant plagiarism. Thanks, AI. I appreciate it. I'll give this two thumbs up. Woo! Hey, boy! Thumbs down on Windows 12. Because you want it to be a Mac. <laughs> change is bad, but Windows I don't like, 12 is good. I don't like change. I know, Matt. I we don't, all, like, we're all familiar with what happens when someone uh, parks in your parking spot. Dude, if anyone parks in my parking spot, it, my whole day's ruined. The re it's, it's not dun, about having dun, it be dun, like dun, my dun, spot. Dun, it's like, dun, I know where my car dun, is. Dun. Parking is so shenanigans. Boy, I think that was the best montage yet. AR glasses. You take that Apple Vision Pro and you chuck it out. We saw a ton of yes. these AR glasses. I don't think we looked at a single one of them. The Asus one was neat because it's much more similar to something like the x -Real, And that is essentially just a couple screens that go on the glasses so you can get a huge experience with something that's face mounted. I got motion sick from from using a lot of them. Yeah. Because like as you're moving your head, there's no like kind of like movement compensation, which is why the Vision Pro is cool because it pins that in space. It's neat, it's kind of cool. 
I'm always gonna prefer just to play on my device or whatever. So I'm actually give the AR glass a pretty big thumbs down. It's thumbs just... down right now, but I did have a light bulb. Okay, it went, it went bing. I'll give these a thumbs up when we get the transparent TV technology yeah, actually, into the glasses. Yeah. Thunderbolt 5. Thunderbolt 5? Here's the thing about Thunderbolt 5. It is really cool. Okay. But its functionality is becoming more and more niche. We're reaching a point where it's like, do we need it? The answer is yes, but no. But maybe. It used to be like, okay, Thunderbolt on like laptops and stuff, like we're really good for... All right, we're gonna put it like an eGPU. And then it was, okay, we're gonna run a 5K display, maybe two 4K displays. You say like, oh, it's to plug into a dock. Well, we're starting to see more and more devices have a lot of these extra ports or whatever built into the device themselves with bandwidth. Yeah. Once we had like Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, USB 4, all of these things, which are all like 40 gigabit, that's enough for almost everyone. I'll give it a soft thumbs up. It's just same. It's, just, it's it, we don't need it. I'm really. gonna rant for a second though, because once they integrated it with USB, USB is so messed up right USB -C, now. USB C, USB four, USB 3.2, Gen one, Gen two. Yep. Try finding the right USB C cable for what you need. It's really difficult. Thunderbolt 5 will be better when it's just built into things and it's no big deal. But I think if you're paying a lot of like extra money for it, it's a very niche yeah. sort of feature. The oh. Nintendo Switch 2. <laughs> so let me tell you, my friends, no! about why okay. I love the Nintendo Switch 2. As someone who's been using a Switch 2 for several months now, um, I've enjoyed the fact that it's so small. I really enjoy the colorways, the blue, the purple. I want to dumb this down for those for those of you who aren't eagle-eyed like I am. He's not talking about the Switch 2 that comes out soon. He's talking no, about Switch the Switch 4. Because the Switch 2 was the Switch Lite. The Switch 3 was the Switch OLED. The Switch 4 is, I don't know, whatever next... What's the, what's the confusion? Here? Okay. I've been using the Switch 2 since like 2019. Okay. So what's great about it is that I just really appreciate the fact that with the Switch, you can play games And we're just going to mute... So look, the Switch 2, I get a lot of hate for me hating Switch 2. I don't care, all right? They need to earn back my trust. And until they do, I'm giving it both thumbs down. Foldable OLED technology. <laughs> You've probably seen something like a Z Flip or Z Fold. You know, there's a lot of foldable oh. phones. When it comes to this larger format, Something you need to keep in mind. The fact that you've got such a large foldable OLED means that you need some serious support, which means that every single foldable OLED monitor as well as foldable laptop is quite heavy and quite thick because the screen is thin, but it's got this huge sort of metal mechanism. And because it's so large, these things are chunky and they're a lot. What we might not talk about is the price. I cannot confirm nor deny the exact price, but this is going to be like two thousand dollars. I don't think most people are going to want that at all. For the size and price of this, you're not too far away from just buying a full-on dual-screen laptop, such as Asus's wonderful ZenBook Duo. Yep. There's also the Lenovo YogaBook 9i, both of which, while they might not be technically foldable, still give you tons of screen real estate with two displays. But I think with far fewer trade-offs because with a traditional hinge, you don't have to worry about all the extra heft. They're yep. still OLED. I'm gonna give it a neat bit of tech, but thumbs down. I'm gonna give a thumbs up to the what? category. Why? Of folding because of the laptop you mentioned. But the monitor itself, I just think Correct. that until this monitor, is thinner, lighter, no. lighter. No. Laptop, yes. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> you gotta take a breath on this one. Go ahead, Matt. Go ahead. Self-driving cars on the freeway. Let's talk about this one, like, really for a second. No way, Mo. Hey. We can all agree that people are bad and should be replaced with robots. Think about humanity. What good have we done? The Thigh Master. Oh. So here's the thing. Boston's back. Because all we are a bunch of meat bags that are just here to build our replacements. I'm a big fan of artificial intelligence, and I'm also a big fan of self-driving tech. Because I don't want no stupid, sleepy, phone-addicted, coffee-drinking, stupid person. I'm talking about Matt to drive on the freeway and not pay attention. What are your response times, Matt? Look at that. He didn't respond instantly what? like the AI robots would. I'm a big fan of this. You know what? I'm gonna give it three thumbs up. Cause honestly, get these people out of here. 
new electric vehicles. There are some, some cool looking concept cars, but we're still in this like lawless no man's land. Honda uh, released some stuff. There's yeah, the Project Sony. Zero. Yeah, the Sony car, which is still not a feel in the name. We're moving in the right direction with EVs. I still think we're, it's not there yet. I'm still thumbs down currently. I'm gonna give it a thumbs up because we're getting there, but I think this first generation of EVs still has a lot to be desired. I think you give it a couple more years and we'll be in good shape. We're getting there. And last up, we have the Humane AI pin. Look, mm. the Humane is the dumbest thing I've ever heard about in my mm. life. Do you trust AI to decide which of your notifications are important enough to tell you? And then- I do, actually. Also, write <clears throat> text for you. Hell yeah, brother. You want to give everything to ChatGPT, <laughs> and you want to pay $700 plus $24, dollars a month. The one that makes maybe sense is the Rabbit R1. It's teenage engineering hardware, so it's going to feel good. Yeah. The Rabbit and the Humane are the next wave, my dudes, because we're going to be able to take our smartphones and smartphone them into the garbage. We're going to be able to take our computers and say, computer you later. Who wants to use their phone or their fingers or their eyeballs? We can just have AI do everything for you. Imagine walking around with a pen that says, hey, I'm a nerd. I bought three humane pens. So when I have one on each side of my shirt, people know that I've invested in the future. And I'm not one of these sort of posers. I really hate Boston. Like our AI future and some STIs. I am not going anywhere without a rigorous course of antibiotics. I Thank you very much for watching this episode of This Is. I forgot to give it a thumbs up, but if God too, let us know what you think in the comments below. We spent too much time at CES, and I gotta say, I've been indoctrinated, and uh, I'm not going anywhere until you call your doctor and wait three or four weeks for the treatment to be successful. Just hit it with the shampoo twice a day.